Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive and it's now time for us to talk smart. This is our segment where we focus on technologies that make our cars, our roads, our cities safer and more convenient. So here's a look at two technologies that do exactly that. Now we live in an extremely competitive world and our automotive industry is as ruthless as it gets. The manufacturers are trying day in and day out to extract the maximum performance efficiency out of their engines, they're trying to tune suspension setups and dynamics to suit particular conditions, but well, what beyond a certain level of mechanicals and electronics? Well, manufacturers, at least the smart ones, are realizing that to entice this new generation where smartphones and tablets are like remote controls to their entire lives, they will have to make the cars also as connected to the users. So well, today what I have with me are two great examples of exactly what I'm talking about. We begin with the Ford EcoSport and its Smart Sync feature. It's an advanced voice recognition software which enables users Sync. to pair their phones and Very multimedia successful. devices to the car's infotainment system and then use voice commands to interface with them. Sync runs on the Windows Embedded Automotive Operating System designed by Microsoft and uses speech recognition technology from Nuance Communications. Call Tom. It can call people from your phone book. Hello. Hey Tom. Send them preset text messages, send text message, and even read out your messages from your inbox. You can even ask it questions about your music. What song is it? Which album? And who's the artist? What's more, you can even voice command your air conditioning, setting the temperature and the fan speed of your choice. All this ensures that your hands stay firmly on the wheel and your eyes on the road while you get comfortable. So how well does the voice recognition system work? It's actually quite hilarious when people try to fake accents so that voice recognition softwares can understand them. And we've had some really dismal ones in the past. But well, Ford claims that the Sync system is one of the best ones in the market because it's been made by, well, Microsoft. So I'm going to put this to test. Well, either this works or this is going to be really funny. Sync, please say a command. Phone. Phone. Read message or help. Call phone. Sorry, I didn't understand you. Please say a command. Phone. Phone. Please say a command. Dial. Confirm the command by saying yes or no. Yes. Dial. Is that correct? Notwithstanding a few hiccups and funny reactions, the sync features came through with flying colors, understanding and executing every command. I must admit that its receptiveness and accuracy managed to exceed my expectations. Iron Man short drove an Audi, but looks like Jarvis rides in the EcoSport. Our next modern marvel has been designed and built right here in India. It's Mahindra's spunky E2O electric car and it's the country's only pure electric offering. The electric technology is certainly the future, but that's not the only awe-inspiring tech on board. The E2O features an incredible interface between your car and your smartphone. What you're about to see is going to blow your mind. Now let's be honest, how many times has it been that you've forgotten to lock your car? Now it's, it's a common thing, especially with these new remote control keys. It's not like in the good old days where you had to manually lock your car, so you probably never forget. Now you're in your office or in your bedroom and you realize that you've forgotten to lock your car, what do you do? Well, you take out your faithful companion, your smartphone, you log into the E2O app and you press lock. And it takes a little bit of time to process, but in a while, There, it's locked. Well, picture this scenario. Now, you're living in a place where the weather is a little uncomfortable. I'm just gonna say Bombay weather through most part of the year. Well, when you get into your car, the air conditioning actually takes a bit of time before it starts getting effective. Well, not a problem. With the E2O, what you do is moments before you get into the car, you can log onto your application and you can manually start your air conditioning with the press of a touch screen button. So the moment you enter the car, you're actually welcomed by a temperature of your comfort. The E2O features an onboard self-diagnostic telemetry which diagnoses, records and notifies engineers back at Mahindra Reva's Bangalore headquarters via SMS or email so you don't have to bring in your car for servicing every few months. The car's drivetrain and batteries are maintenance free and come with a 5 years replacement warranty. But if there is a software glitch, engineers can correct it remotely from Bangalore itself or notify you to take the correct measures. 
The smartphone app also gives you a range on the maps as to how far you can go on the current state of charge. The green range indicates a round trip while the red range indicates a one-way trip before the battery discharges completely. A full charge on the Eto will take you around 100 kilometers, and you can do a max speed of around 80 kilometers per hour. At least that's what Mahindra claims, and that's not too bad for a city car. But assume you're in a position where you've run out of charge. What do you do? Well, Mahindra have this system which they call Revive. What you can do is remotely you can activate a reserve battery in the car through your smartphone or through the touchscreen interface. It'll take you around eight kilometers more to your next charging point or to your destination and you don't have to be stranded on the side of the road, which I think is a fantastic feature to have on an electric car. If you forget about the E2O being an electric car and all the baggage associated with electric technology and the feasibility in India, I think there's a lot that other small car manufacturers can learn from the E2O. Now, Mahindra has packed it with such fantastic technology, which I see no reason why other manufacturers can't have in their small cars. Indians love this kind of stuff and I think it just makes the car such a valuable proposition. Well, aren't cars supposed to be mediums to commute from point A to point B? So what's with all these gizmos? Well, if there's any doubt in your mind as to how much of a difference these technologies can make to cars and brands, well, both these cars have been nominated for the Overdrive Awards this year in their respective categories. And I believe these new age facilitators of convenience have a little something to do with it.